we're going to apply proportionality and variation to uh, the recent landing of the Rosetta probe on uh, the comet whose name I can't pronounce, although uh, familiar with some of those words. One of them is Russian. Um, okay, proportionality and variation uh, applied to this situation. Now, the situation is this. Um, the Rosetta probe is moving along uh, in neutral orbit, well, pretty much orbiting very slowly, very, very, very slow orbit, probably won't complete an orbit in a, in a year, uh, around the comet, uh, uh, again, don't remember the name of the comet, but the, uh, it, it's orbiting a comet. The comet has an approximate average radius of maybe uh, a mile. Okay, but it's irregularly shaped. Um, now, when the uh, Rosetta probe uh, or satellite uh, released its probe, the probe slowly descended to the planet at about what they say was walking speed. That could be anywhere from a meter per second to two meters per second. Okay, uh, now when it landed, it's supposed to have harpoons that anchored it to the planet. They didn't deploy, so when it landed, it bounced and then came down about a kilometer away. Um, the bounce took about an hour. So we want to think if all that uh, is consistent with our concept of the law of universal gravitation. So we're going to model that bounce based on a few assumptions. We're going to model the comet as a sphere one mile in radius with a density equal to the average density of the Earth. Now, I will say that the density is probably more nearly equal to the average density of the Earth's crust, which is significantly lower than the average density of the Earth, the Earth uh, being very compressed as you move toward the center. However, uh, we'll, we'll stick with this model. And we're going to understand that for two reasons. This model is not anywhere near precise, but it ought to give us a good order of magnitude or better uh, approximation of the behavior of this bounce. Um, <clears throat> if you see the model as a sphere, well, okay, the model isn't, uh, the, the comet isn't a sphere. It's irregular, like a piece of riprap, a, a, a rock, okay? It's longer than it is wide. Um, and the comet uh, hit out toward uh, one end of it. So, um, and again, the density is not equal to the average density of the Earth. It's, it's probably somewhat less than that, maybe about half, uh, or maybe a little more than that. Okay. Uh, what we want to do is we want to figure out the gravitational field at distance r from the center of the comet. And ultimately, we're going to want to get the gravitational field at the surface of the comet. Okay. Well. Gravitational field is the acceleration of gravity. So what can you tell me about the acceleration of gravity at the surface of a sphere? You should pause and think this through. But um, first, let's use the universal gravitational law, the Newton's law of universal gravitation. We're going to say that the force at any point outside the sphere is equal to the mass of the sphere, and I got big M sub C, C for the comet, and uh, little m for the mass of the probe. And I didn't bother putting a subscript on that. Uh, divided by R squared. Of course, we've got the universal gravitational constant. So what's the gravitational field? That's the acceleration of gravity. To get the acceleration of gravity on this probe or on any mass that we want to put in the vicinity of this comet, uh, we're going to divide use Newton's second law, we're going to divide the force exerted by gravity on that mass by that mass to get the gravitational uh, acceleration. <coughs> now, I use little g sub c of r for the gravitation at distance r, and by dividing the expression for the force by the expression for the mass, we get this expression for the gravitational field at distance r. Distance r. Okay? Now, we could figure out the average density of the Earth. We have information on the radius of the Earth. We have information on the uh, mass of the Earth. 
So from the radius, we could calculate the volume, and we could divide the mass by the volume, get the density of the Earth, then we could figure out the uh, volume of the comet, and multiply it by that density, and get the mass of the comet. Uh, we don't have to do that. We can use proportionality and variation in a way that hopefully would be kind of illuminating here. Okay, so one proportionality we have, the radius of the comet is about one four thousandth the radius of the Earth. It should be common knowledge that the radius of the Earth is about 4,000 miles, just a little less than 4,000 miles, very nearly 4,000 miles. So the radius of the comet is one four thousandth the radius of the Earth, the radius of the comet being one mile, the radius of the Earth being 4,000 miles. Uh, we can use that to not have to worry about uh, specific values of R. We can uh, use that uh, proportionality between the radius of the Earth and the radius of the comet to our advantage in calculating the gravitational field. Okay, so uh, it turns out that the volume then of the planet of the comet is about 1 over 4,000 cube times that of the Earth because uh, the proportionality of volumes is going to be the cube of the proportionality of diameters given the same density. It follows that the mass of the comet is 1 over 4,000 cubed times the mass of the Earth. Now, how does that affect this? Well, uh, since the mass of the comet is 1 over 4,000 cubed times the mass of the Earth, the gravitational, uh, we, we can replace the mass of the comet by 1 over 4,000 cubed times the mass of the Earth in this expression and get that the uh, the gravitational field of the comet at distance r is 1 over 4,000 cubed uh, times uh, universal gravitational constant mass of the Earth over r squared. Now we'll <coughs> excuse, go, go on with this. Um, I'll simply say that uh, you don't want to say that the gravitational field uh, at the surface of the comet is 1 over 4,000 cubed times the gravitational field at the surface of the Earth because at the surface of the Earth we're at a different distance from the center. The R is different at the surface of the Earth than it is at the surface of the comet. So we're going to take that into consideration and then come up with a, uh, what I think is a pretty reasonable estimate of the uh, gravitational field at the surface of the comet.